slide back. Okay? So here's a simple way to implement it. Put your detail in a navigation controller. You put your detail in a navigation controller, then you can set the left bar button item to be that bar button. Okay? What's cool about this way is that you can set the left bar button item by setting it on the navigation item of a view I view controller, which means even though you're not set up yet, you don't have any outlets, you can just sit, put that bar button in there and when the view appears in a navigation controller at any time, it's going to use that left bar button item. So that's how you put it in the left. So this is kind of a tricky way to do it, to make this really easy to implement. Uh, I kind of recommend it. It's a good trick. It's not, there's nothing bad about it. The only thing that's bad about it is you would never want to have navigation going on both in your master and your detail. So even though your detail is in a navigation controller, don't allow any actual navigation there. You're only using it to be, have a place to put this bar and get a title at the top, okay? We'll do that in the demo. And then similarly, when it switches back to landscape, then it's going to say, okay, you can take that bar button away now because the master is visible always in landscape, okay? So that's it. Those are the three split view ones. These slides are here for you to review. Uh, this is a difficult delegate, but to make split view really work right, unfortunately, you have to implement these three uh, methods. Okay, so updating the detail when the master changes. That's a fundamental thing about what happens in split view. How do you do that? Okay, because the detail and the master are both on screen at the same time. Uh, how are we going to update the detail when someone clicks in the master, basically? And there's two choices. One is target action. So just have your master have a target action method to itself, and when it gets that target action, it's going to go find its detail and update the detail. Basically do the same thing it would do in prepare for segue, just set whatever's necessary on that detail. That's what we're going to do uh, in our demo. Uh, of course, if, you're do if it's a table view in master, you have to use that did select row at index path. That's target action for table view. But if it were just a button in your master, like that calculator thing, if you just click a button that says show the graph, it could just be normal target action. And it would do something like this. Okay, find the detail and go update it. The second way is with a segue. It's called the replace segue. This segue replaces the entire detail view. Okay, completely replaces it. This one's kind of annoying because of all those delegate methods because it's going to replace the entire view, including the navigation controller with the little button. <laughs> okay, so you segue to a new one, and now you got to somehow get that button out of there and put it back into the new one. It's quite a pain in the neck. Okay, so we don't really use the replace segue that much in the split view controller. It's pretty good in the ones where the master is always visible, but if we're ever doing the ones where the master hides and we put a button up there, it's a pain to keep that button up there when it's constantly replacing the segue. Uh, the right side. Remember, by the way, segues always give you new versions of view controllers. Right? So like when we were doing Imaginarium, every time we'd click on a new flower or jellyfish or whatever, it would, give, it would push to a brand new instance of view controller. Segways are always new instances. They're never reusing, ever, a view controller. Okay, that's fundamental to a segue. It gives you a new instance all the time. So here, it would be a new instance and it would replace the detail. It's called a replace segue. And you, to do that, you just control drag. And the kind is instead of being push, you pick replace. It'll only work when you're doing it inside of a uh, split view. Okay? All right, last thing we're going to talk about on iPad is popovers. So this is what a popover looks like. Okay, there's a little table view with the equations in it inside a popover. And popover controller, the class, is actually not a UI view controller. Okay, popover controller is an NS object. Uh, but what it does is it controls another view controller popping up on screen. Okay, and it does that with this property content view controller. You set that on a UI popover controller. Usually you control drag it in storyboard, so you almost never actually set this property directly. Um, and when you set it, that segue, okay, when the person clicks on it, the thing that's going to cause the segue, you're going to get prepare for segue because it's a segue. But there's a special thing there, which is that the segue you get is going to be a subclass of UI storyboard popover segue. And so you can check is kind of class, and if it is, you can ask the segue, give me the popover controller, UI popover controller, that controls this thing that's going to pop over. But mostly popovers are just a matter of finding the view controller that you want to pop up, control dragging to it, setting the type of segue to be popover, and letting it go. Okay? You just prepare for segue, and off you go. It's a normal segue. And again, it's a segue, so the view controller that's going to be put inside the popover is instantiated, a brand new one using whatever's in the storyboard. 
Okay, so popovers are actually really easy in the storyboard. You just control, drag, boom, you're done. And sometimes you don't even need to do this business and prepare for segue because you don't need to talk to the popover controller. You just need to talk to the thing you're segueing to, set up that table view with the equations in it, y equals cos x cos and x or whatever was in there. You just need to set that up. So you don't even need the popover controller. You just need to talk directly to the um, thing inside the popover. Uh, the user dismisses a popover by just touching anywhere outside of it. If they touch outside of it, the popover dismisses. Okay? You can, uh, there is an exception if they touch outside of it, but they touch on a view that's in this array of views in the popover controller, those are like exceptions. Those won't cause it to dismiss. All right? One thing annoying case of this is a toolbar. The entire toolbar is in the pass-through views. So if you bring up a popover from a button in a toolbar, then if the user clicks anywhere else in the toolbar, like on another button, it won't dismiss that popover. And why they decided to do that, I do not know. But that's what this pass-through th views thing is. It can be annoying. Um, but you can set it yourself, too. You can say, well, if they cl click over here, I don't want to dismiss that pop popover. Um, you can dismiss popovers from code by just saying dismiss popover animated in UI popover controller, and that will dismiss it. And you can find out if the user dismissed it using popover controller did dismiss dis popover. This is a UI popover controller delegate method. So the UI popover controller has a delegate, and if you set that delegate, you'll get this message when the user dismisses the popover. You usually don't need to find this out, but sometimes you want to know. Okay, so that's popovers. We're not gonna, I'm not going to ask you to do popovers in your homework this week. I'll try to fit it into next week's, and it's not in my demo either. Um, so popovers are going to remain probably a little bit you know, fuzzy to you until we do a demo. So here is the demo. It's called Shutterbug. And what it's going to be is I'm going to have a table view full of uh, a list of a couple of hundred of the most recently posted photos on Flickr. Okay. So I'm going to query Flickr with you know, URL, go out there and query Flickr and get this information, load up a table view with it, and when you click on it, we'll use our image view controller from Imaginarium to display the photo. And then I'm going to do that on the iPhone, and I'm going to do it on the iPad as well. Okay, so that's what the demo is going to be. So you can see a lot of stuff here. All right, let's move this out of the way. Okay. All right, let's go, let's actually, um, I'll show you the coming attractions here. Your homework that's gone out today is due in a week, next Wednesday. It's about all this stuff. Uh, again, Friday we have a Stanford only section, and then next week we'll be covering core data, and maybe we'll get to some multitasking API as well. All right, let's close that. We're gonna create a new, pro oops, new project here in Xcode. Okay, I'm going to call it Shutterbug, and it's going to be universal. Okay, so I'm not making it iPhone only, I'm going to make it universal. So I'm going to get two storyboards out of this when I click this. Um, we'll put it in the same place we always put everything. So here it is, and you can see two storyboards. There's an iPhone storyboard right here, and here's an iPad storyboard. Okay, and so I don't really want anything in either of these, so I got this gigantic view here, so I'm just going to delete that. And same thing, iPhone, I got this one right here, I'm going to delete that. So I'm going to start with completely blank storyboards in both. And we'll build the iPhone one first, uh, then we'll switch over to the iPad. So this is going to be a table view based app. So I'm just going to pick up a table view out of here and drag it out. Okay, so here's my table view. Um, of course, I'm going to want to set its uh, class to be some subclass of UI table view controller. So let's go do that. Let's make that. All right, it's a class. It's going to be a subclass of UI table view controller. I'm going to call this thing Flickr Photos TVC for table view controller, OK? Because that's what it's going to do. It's going to be a table view controller that shows Flickr photos. And I'll put it in normal places. Here we go. Um, let's go over here, and we'll set that to be our um, class for now. And so now, if I look at this class, this is going to have all of my code in it. Now, it, it comes with a lot of stuff. Here's my view controller lifecycle stuff that it has. I'm going to get rid of that. It comes with this table view data source stuff. By the way, I like to change this pragma to be to look like this. A little easier for me to see. Um, and this is the, going to be the table view data source method. You recognize those three, right? Number of sections, number of rows. So we're going to implement those. Commented out down here, it gives you a lot of stuff for editing the table, moving 
things around, stuff like that. We're not going to cover any of that today. You can review that at your leisure. And then, of course, navigation, which is prepare for Segway. We are going to do that a little bit later. So we have a new class here. Let's talk about its public API. And this one's going to have easy public API, which is a strong NS array, uh, which we'll call photos. And these are going to be of Flickr photo NS dictionaries. So these are going to be dictionaries that I'm going to download from Flickr. And these dictionaries have information about photos that are on Flickr. Okay, so that's all these are, dictionaries with a bunch of keys and values in there about photos. Not the actual d image data, I'll have to fetch that separately, but just information about it. And one thing I really want to make sure that I do is that when my model changes, so someone sets um, the photos, oops, I did this again, this is doing this again. Um, so if someone sets this array of photos, then I'm going to make sure that I update my table view. Is that what it's called? Reload data. I can remember that one. Yeah. Um, and that's just any time a model changes, obviously I want to reload my, my data in my table. Makes sense. Now, how am I going to set this? How am I going to call set photos? How am I going to get this Flickr data? Where am I going to put that code? Well, I don't actually want to put that in this class because I want this class to be a generic Flickr photo viewing class. I don't want it to be specific to any particular set of photos. So I'm going to make a concrete subclass of this. Okay, so this is not really an abstract class because it kind of works on its own. But I'm going to make a, essentially like a concrete subclass of it. It's a subclass of Flickr photo, uh, photos TVC. And I'm going to call it uh, just posted Flickr photos TVC. Okay? So it's going to be a subclass of that and it's going to show me the ones that have just been posted. So let's create that right here. So we have this new one here. And it's just all it's going to do is call self.photos to set this model right here. So in our storyboard, let's change our class here. Instead of being Flickr Photos TVC, I'm going to change this to be just posted Flickr Photos TVC. Okay? So now that's going to show my just posted ones. Um, so what about the implementation that's just posted? It's really easy. I just, in my view did load, super view did load, I'm just going to call self fetch photos. And then we'll make a fetch photos method here. And I'm just going to say self.photos equals something. Okay? That's, I'm, I'm going to get my uh, photos here. Uh, all right, what's the problem here? Root class. Hmm, uh, that's weird. Uh, oh, strange. Flickr hmm. photos TVC. Okay. Um, not sure why I didn't add that. Um, okay. So, there we go. All right, so that's good. So, that's what we're going to do. So, in here is where we're going to have to go out to make a fetch to uh, Flickr and do that. So, let's go ahead and write that code. It's pretty straightforward. Um, one thing we're going to need, though, is a little bit of helper code to help us with those Flickr fetches. Um, and I've provided this to you for your homework. Here it is right here, this Flickr fetching code. Oops. Let's go over here to this. I'm going to drag this in. We'll take a look, brief look at this. All right, I'm going to copy it in. All right, so if you look at this Flickr fetcher, it has this API right here that provides these class methods with some URLs that you can fetch information from Flickr. So we're going to do... Uh, for example, recent georeference photos for your homework, and you're going to want to do top places because in your homework, you're going to be asked to show places from Flickr, um, and I'm just going to be showing only photos. Okay? Um, 